name is Brian Mason, and the title of today's Bible study is, Have Not I Commanded Thee? These words from the book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 9, are very, very, very special words to me, because they're the words that the Lord himself spoke to me very clearly before I came to Wales, returned to Wales, and that I'm drawn to speak today from Joshua and to see that, yes, as Joshua was commanded, so was I, and so are all those who will give themselves wholly unto God in these days. The God will still speak. The God still has a work to do. And he needs those who are absolutely in line with his will, absolutely surrendered, abandoned unto him, in order that he can and he will work his own perfect will through those who are his. Not those who think that they know it all, but those who are weak, as it were, in themselves, because they're so dependent upon God. And God can take of them. Are you one of them? Are you one who is prepared to let God have his way with you. Let us look at this chapter of one Joshua. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Joshua, he had been Moses' minister. He was one who went with Moses when Moses went up the mount to receive the commandments. Joshua had been faithful unto Moses. And in being faithful unto Moses, he'd been faithful unto God. Joshua, along with Caleb, were the only two who having been through the wilderness, were the only two who were permitted to go into the promised land. All the others had died, fallen by the wayside. But these two were the ones who had been chosen by God because they had been proved faithful to God. Joshua, he'd been faithful as it were in the small things of God. And because Joshua had proved to be faithful, then God took of Joshua and was able to use Joshua to fulfill that which he could not fulfill through Moses. Yes, Moses had been very faithful unto God, but there had been that point whereby he had doubted God. And God, because of this, said, No, no, you will not see the, pro you will not go into the promised land. Are we ones? Are we looking? for whatever the promised land of God may be. 
in relation to our own lives. And that is that which is for the glory of God. That which is entirely given over to God and for the kingdom of God. Whatever it, form it might take, it doesn't matter what form it might take. It is as long as God is able to do what he needs to do. And in these days, it's just exactly the same. That there have been those who have been faithful. And like Moses, had, had gone on before. Yes, God had taken Moses unto himself. And Joshua, he was the one left behind with Caleb the one who God was relying upon, entirely relying upon the one who had not just been Moses' servant, but had been God's servant as well. Can you say that you are God's servant? Can you say that you will step, as it were, into the shoes of ones who've gone before and take their place because in each generation God needs those whom he can use. And then unless there are those whom he can use, then how can the work of God continue? That is a challenge in these days. The continuation of the work of God to take the glorious gospel to every creature. And that is why it is so important that we consider our own lives. Are they in line with what God wants to do? Or are we seeking to do our own thing? Are we coming to God and saying, Oh, bless this, do this, do that. And it's absolutely out of line with the will of God. It's being impartial. Waiting upon God. Yes, and hearing his voice to say, This is the way, walk ye in it. And what a promise that God not just a promise, but promises that God had for his servant Joshua. Oh, yes, he'd seen a God that this man Joshua was not taken up with the things of himself, was not seeking to be in the absolute limelight, not seeking to be receive the blessings of God for himself, but to be in that place where God could do what he wanted to do for the glory of God alone. And here he was, and God speaking to him. Verse 3, what a promise. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, as it were Moses had lost it, because of that unbelief at a particular point. But yet Moses was still looked upon as the most one in the Old Testament, the most that God had used. And Moses was seen as what? The servant of God. God had a, a testimony, yes, to Moses, that Moses was his man. But Moses had fulfilled what God had wanted. Even, yes, it might have been that had he not unbidden, been in unbelief that he would have gone over into the promised land. But God is not caught out. God 
was still able to do that which he had determined to do, that which he had upon his heart to do, and that was to take his covenant promises onwards through his people. Yes, the unbelief in the wilderness had meant that those who had left Egypt on that incredible night when the angel of death had come and seen the blood, where the angel had seen the blood upon the, the doorposts and the lintel and passed over. Yes, they had gone out. But God became displeased with their unbelief. And what does it in these days displeases him? It is unbelief. Unbelief upon his promises of his word. Let us be real, let us waken up in these days and take hold of the promises of God afresh. Let us be a generation which believes God and acts upon his word. For the word of God is there to be believed and acted upon. Then we shall see God once more not just to read about it as something that has happened in generations in the past, but to see God move in miraculous power, to see God move in the supernatural power of his own being, to see miracles of healing, miracles of deliverance from evil spirits, and miracles of the transformation of lives, hopeless, helpless lives, that sin-ruined lives can be brought and into that relationship with God himself, whereby through repentance and faith, confession of sin, God can restore Sin scarred lives, helpless and hopeless lives, those who are dependent upon the things of the world and because they're dependent upon the things of the world, they're missing the things of God. Are you missing the things of God? Joshua didn't. Joshua believed the promises of God that when Joshua was spoken to by God, he acted upon them and he acted upon them in faith. He didn't question them. He stepped out. He took hold of the promises and the glorious move of God in those days, it must have been quite something. God, at work alive and at work amongst his people, and through this man, he can do the same with you. He can take the cast-offs of this world and transform them to shake very nations, through what? Through the prayer and power of God being released through them. That is our God. Let us not limit our God. For that is sin when we limit our God. Sin when there is unbelief in the camp. And where there is unbelief in the camp in the body of Christ. Oh God, come and shake and shake and shake until 
unbelief is cast out, and glory brought to thyself once more, even in Great Britain. Out with that which is of sin within the body of Christ. Bring it out into the open. That which is sin within the body of Christ. Because the judgment begins first of the house of God. Moses, as it were, had been judged and found wanting. Because we can only say we have been where we believe, disbelieve God. That is serious. He could cast us to one side and find another. Oh, are you being real with God in these days? Are you letting the Holy Spirit search your heart? Search my heart, O God, and see if there be any wicked way within me. Because when we've been searched, when we've been cleansed, when we've been open, then God can use us. Because then we are cleansed vessels, and He can only use cleansed vessels. Oh, and God, my, he had a message, all right, to Joshua. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, or the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. What a promise. God spelt it out, what the, the land would be. And there it is. And the land in these days is a greater land than the promise of what Joshua would lead the people into. Because the greater land in these days is that out of every kindred, tribe, and nation shall come those who shall worship the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, that out of every nation, and we're seeing the nations being shaken in these days, nations, Lands where the gospel would not be permitted to be spoken of are being opened by God himself. God. Oh, our God, let us not limit him. Let us move on with him. And move as him. For he that dwelleth, he that is in us, Jesus Christ, is greater than he that is in the world. He that is in the world, yes, the devil, and all his cohorts. Yes, the, whether there's millions and millions of devils and demons, They've all been brought to naught at Calvary's cross. Every principality and power of darkness. And the responsibility is with the body of Christ to move on with God. To move on letting God do what he wants. To bind the strong men. Yes, on the basis of Calvary's victory of the cross. The blood of Jesus. But for him to do it through us, 
He needs cleanse vessels. Cleanse by the blood of Jesus. Nothing between, Lord, nothing between. And Joshua, yes, he was from the Old Testament. But he, as it were, was a cleansed vessel in his time. And God was able to use him. Is he able to use you? Or is there something in between, something blocking the way? Verse 5, there shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Again, a promise. A promise from the very mouth of God. Yes, can you take hold of that promise? Or is there something which is holding you back? Something which is preventing God doing what he wants to do through you? Because once God has us, Then he will act through us. And the powers of darkness will not be able to get in the way and hinder. Because Jesus Christ is what? He is sovereign Lord. He is the preeminent one. Has he the preeminence in your life? He, is he Lord of all your life? Or are you holding something back from him? Joshua withheld nothing. And because he withheld nothing, the promises were open to him. There have been those down the years Yes, who've had their, their battles all right. But God has brought them into line with himself. Men like Reese Howells and Smith Wigglesworth. Oh, how God could use them. Cleanse vessels. Yes, oh yes, they had their battles all right. And I too have had my battles. At times it was though there have been many steamrollers coming over, crushing and crushing and crushing, but crushing out that which stands in the way of God working. And God, because he has his vessel, able to do what he wants to do. And the promises of God are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. Dare you take hold of the promises of God and expect him without a shadow of doubt to do that which he has said he will do. Yes, our God is unchangeable. And if we're out of line with him, out of sync with him, then we need to be in line and in sync with him. And then we shall see that which we are waiting to see him working not on the limited scale of man or woman but on the unlimited scale of God that's our God he's waiting and he's waiting for your answer
We will be open to him. We will be honest with him. Not my will, but thine be done. It's such a wonderful word in Joshua. And it's an amazing chapter is this one. I was going to continue with 1 John. But just just matter very short time before I was going to do continue. Came to me. No. And it was I was guided to Joshua. Hadn't prepared anything. Just let the Holy Spirit speak through me. Hadn't even read it. I know that I read it many times before. But what we'll do, I will leave it. This particular, at this point, because I haven't even reached uh, the title, and continue tomorrow on this chapter. Because there is so much in this chapter, and I haven't even got to the point of what I was going to say. Have, have not I commanded thee, and speak about what the Lord had commanded, commanded to me, when he confirmed to return to Wales. Father, thy word is an amazing word. Thy word is as as alive today as it was when the day that you spoke to Joshua and you're speaking in these days when you can find those who will listen to you and in listening to you obey you, O God. And there you'll find those who will be opened with you. That where there is sin which is hidden, that they will bring it out into the open. And that you will be able to take of the ones who have been open with you and so given themselves to you that you'll be able to use them to shake the very powers of hell and to see that you will once more work on a scale, an even greater scale than you did through men like Reese Howells and Smith Wigglesworth. And that the Lord Jesus Christ shall be preeminent in this ministry and the ministry of your servant here who's speaking. And all shall be through him, for your glory and for thy glory alone. Because Jesus said, If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, as ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. On the basis of that promise, I take it and say amen to thee, and glory be to thee, O God. Amen.